What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be fooling around with Subterrain 2, The Mines of Titan. I've been waiting a really long time to get my hands on this one. I was impressed by the demo that they put out a while back for one of the Steam Next Fests, and so I'm very excited to dive on in and take a look at this game. You guys will know that I'm a big fan of anything that has to do with survival, crafting, you know, scavenging mechanics, and that seems to be exactly what this game is. If you haven't seen the game before, uh, this is a game where you wake up in a cryopod on the moon of Titan, and the place is falling apart. The place is actually the remnant of kind of like a leftover terraforming camp that has ultimately fallen apart and has been abandoned by their corporate overlords. And you're attempting to get them all back up to speed and fix up all the various systems so that the place is self-sufficient and nobody has to die of starvation and hunger or anything else else. Along the way, you're going to be fighting lots of monsters, taking lots of scalps, and in true subterrain form, if you never played the first game before, I also really like the first game. The first game is a little bit fiddly-diddly, and it's got a bit of a learning curve, but once you get to the bottom of it, it's not a bad game altogether. Uh, but in the case of this game, that gameplay is preserved with loads of crafting, lots of system upgrades, lots of research, and things that you're supposed to be working on at all times. And so I'm bringing you in for about 30 minutes to check the game out and give you my first impressions. I've played for about an hour prior to this recording. I think the readout said about 70 minutes was how long I played before I started recording. I would have liked to have gotten a little bit further on in, but I had kind of like a home install thing come in. Ah, step on my trap, nerd. That's what you get. I had a home install thing come in that ate up the rest of the morning, and unfortunately it was more hands-on than I thought it was going to be. So I had to sit in there and kind of like guide the experience along the way. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, it's not an early access. This is a fully-fledged release. Those are very, very rare nowadays. Aside from that, you can also take a look down below and you'll find my Discord and my Twitch stream. Be sure to stop on and give it a follow because I will be streaming this game from the top the day that this video goes live so that you can see the process that went on into the game and also uh, just get like three or four hours on into it. I tend to use the stream time as my own personal playtime because I don't really get a lot of time to play games outside of work. And I do want to check this one out, what with all the excitement and whatnot. I'm going to step back over here. I got him with the trap. Hey, nice. We two-tapped him. Got some beetle shells right there. Grab that. But I will be streaming this on the day that the video goes live, hopefully so you can get a more in-depth look at the title and maybe I can develop some further early access thoughts. So for right now, what am I up to inside the context of the game? One of the researchers back at the facility, I've gone through a lot of the basic tutorials. This game is very wordy on the front end, and I would warn you that this game is a slow burner from what I've seen so far. Uh, this is a title where there's going to be a lot of dialogue up at the beginning of the game. You're going to talk to a lot of people. They intersparse it out with these little, like, these little adventures down into the mine to go gather things uh, for the settlement. But I've been sent down into the mine. Apparently one of the engineers that's working inside the oxygen reactor, uh, the thing that allows us to breathe, was coming down here to check the struts and make sure that everything is working properly so that it's safe to come down into the mine. The struts are all good. Everything's all fantastic. They got attacked by mutated bugs. They had to run on out. And so in true RPG gopher format here, we've got to start taking a look around and seeing if we can find Judith's notebook. Unfortunately, I don't really have much more information than that, so I don't know where about exactly this book might be at. The mines seem to be fairly sprawling, and there seems to be a lot of threats down here, and so I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. There's the notebook right there. I happened to stumble across it in the first five minutes. I was literally just thinking inside my head, like, this is going to be a really, really boring video. If I end up just walking around the mines the entire time trying to find this damn thing, I got a crowbar over here, and I've got a first aid kit. The game does have a fairly extensive UI. I think actually some of my initial complaints about the game almost universally revolve around that UI. Is there oxygen in this area? I just wanted to make sure, is my oxygen canister draining right now? It is. So the oxygen is at 65%, and we like to have a 70%, I think, saturate. I think in real life, you actually only need to have like a 16% oxygen balance to be okay. And then from there, I think the rest is like nitrogen and something else. I only know that because I've played Astronauts a lot. I may be way off, but I had to learn the actual balance of the air you breathe in order to balance out my ship in that game. I got another little critter right here. Dude, I'm getting pretty strong. These critters, 
they like almost murdered me the first time I came down in here. This is definitely a difficult game. I would compare it to something like Stone Shard where you can die pretty catastrophically and pretty awfully if you let yourself get overwhelmed down here in the mine. Uh, you can actually harvest off of various things. Uh, basically, you're going to be the over-glorified camp gopher throughout the entire adventure because you're the new guy. You don't really have any seniority. And everything here is kind of dystopian. So, like, if you want to have a bed, you've got to pay for that bed on, like, a weekly or, like, daily basis or whatever. Murdered that bug right there. Strength level up's looking pretty good, too. Survival proficiency level up. The game does come strapped with a lot of skills. You will find them inside of... This menu, right here with the little pickaxe. Uh, there's a number of skills that you're going to be leveling up as you go through the game. When your character levels up, you get a perk point. As you level up these skills, you will get perks that become unavailable, or they'll become available for you to dump points into so that you get better at the various activities that you can do down in the dungeon. So, uh, you know, if you've got your physical stat over here, you're going to have lots of dashes and jumps and disengages and things of that nature. If you go into this tree right here, uh, you're going to get, we've got one-handed right here. You're going to get increased one-handed training. Gives you the upper hand, boosting your stats for a couple of turns. That's an active perk. Uh, there's lots of passives and actives and things in here that unlock as you go through the game. Some fun things that I haven't got to play around with yet, like pistols and rifles and blasters and things of that nature. Right now, I'm just beating stuff to death with a pipe like a Wasteland Raider. Because that's the way that life goes. Uh, the game does come equipped. You actually get this installed. You get Cyber Eyes equipped, like, right in the first five minutes of the game that they give you that allow you to uplink into the Wi-Fi network for the entire work camp. And if you're ever confused about where anything is or anyone is, you can just find those people and you can track them. And it'll put this little line on the floor. Oh, there's a bug right there. Get out of here. Got the bug taken out. Got some worm meat off of them. The things that we're picking up off the little bad guys right now, uh, they're going to be used for research. Research is kind of a slow, arduous process in this. Much like the first game, it's fiddly-diddly. You're going to have to get used to it. Uh, but basically, the way that it works is you can craft from anywhere inside the game so long as you have a personal storage chest uh, that are scattered all throughout the work camp that's been abandoned. You put stuff inside of there. If it's already inside of there, you can trade money to hire the researchers on site. Like I said, it's a dystopia where everybody's like looking out for themselves at this point because all of society has failed and we've been abandoned by our parent corporation. Everything functions off of a credit system that was implemented by the headmaster. And so if you want people to research things like the slimes and the bug meats and the methane ores that we've been picking up, you've got to queue it on up. Now, one oversight here is that I would like to be able to queue up multiples of these at one time at this point i'm just kind of labor gated what i mean by that is these things actually research in a couple of turns they don't take that long to research however you can't queue up multiples of them to tick up research a whole bunch of times and you research these items like some of them give you like two percent research so you're gonna have to do that 50 times coming into this menu to queue them up i would like to see it so that i can just be like dunk, 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 and then i can stack them so that it'll just do them all at once. It'll save you going back into the menu. You guys will know that one of my modus operandi for all UI design is kind of like, how do I limit the amount of clicks that the player has to take in order to get an activity done? And that would severely limit the amount of clicking and menu opening. As we found Judith's notebook, let's go ahead and drop that back off with her and we'll see what she has to say. The game does autosave pretty frequently and it does have a customizable interval. Uh, that you can play around with inside the options if you wanted to make that happen. This right here is Judith. Uh, the game has a great art style. One thing you'll note if you were a fan of the first Subterrain game is that it had a really cool art style. This game continues in that trend and continues to have an even better art style. The pixel art in this game is very, very well done. The animations are well done. People walking around are mostly just like stiff mannequins, but in combat, things feel good. They look good. They play well with one another. And I found that it's been satisfying just kind of looking at the scenescape while I walk around. That's probably not good. I found your notebook. Judith is extremely relieved, letting out a huge sigh and smiling. You hand her the notebook, and she flips through it to make sure that it's intact. You're a lifesaver. Here's some credits, and I'm going to share some of my easier blueprints with you. I'm going to put them in your storage, and you can use the item production menu to research and craft those up. You get credits and a blueprint. Thank you. It was really nothing. No, it was definitely something. The camp would be better off if everybody was like you. Have a good one. All right, so we've got Judas Melee Blueprint, we've got a Ranged Blueprint, and we've got a Uniform Blueprint. 
I don't know if there's, I've been kind of like on a quest chain that's been tutorializing the entire time. And so the fact that she didn't give me any more quests around here makes me kind of like directionless. I'm going to talk to people around here and see if I can find any jobs around. Well, it doesn't look like there's jobs to be had around here, unfortunately. So I guess I'll just head back to my domicile. We're kind of sleepy right now. We're not like crazy sleepy, but we're sleepy enough that I kind of want to take care of my meters. You will have to babysit meters in this game. It doesn't feel like it's altogether that um, that that oppressive. Like, yes, there are survival mechanics in the game. You have to drink water. You have to eat food. But they load you up with so much food and water at like the beginning of the game in various quantities that it hasn't really been something that I'm concerned with. Utilizing items like these, it happens over the long term, so it gives you a 100 turn buff that will slowly lower these meters over here. She gave us a number of things that we can research, which are actually good. So let's go to the research menu real fast. We'll get Judith's ideas over here and knock those out. It looks like there's quite a few of them. I'll also queue up all the other researches that we have laying around. So we'll throw those in there real fast. Some of these researches I can't do yet because it says our facility levels haven't been leveled up enough. And so that's where I've implied the idea that we're going to be upgrading a lot of these facilities via doing quests. There's lots of broken things around that say this is out of order at the moment. And so I'm guessing at some point they're going to cut me loose with like an engineering team or something like that to try to get the base up and back online. You do have personal quarters in this game. I would highly recommend that you pay attention while you're walking around the facility when you're doing the initial tutorials, it's a good idea. Otherwise, you're going to be really, really disoriented. So try to pay attention when you're running around the map and doing your thing. For now, we're just going to sleep for a little bit till our sleep meter's all good to go. The game says that it has like a time limit thing up here. I've seen some people on the forums kind of like worrying about that. I haven't run into it yet. Like, I haven't been on a time limit so far, but given the fact that it tracks a day and night cycle and also has the days numbered, and it does track all of this information, my guess is that that's going to become pertinent later on in the title. Once we get further on in, they're going to be like, you know, the reactor needs this done within, like, the next three days just to kind of inject a little bit of crisis on in there. I don't actually particularly know what my next job is. Well, I got a message from Ida. I didn't even realize that I had email. A new message has arrived. What's this? You check your message and a message scrolls across your vision. Come back to the clinic as soon as possible. I've got urgent news for you. Okay, well, the clinic's right over here. We're already, like, in the right area, so we might as well check it on out. I need to, like, store up some things, though. So one of the things I don't like about this game, the menus are very, very fiddly. Uh, so there's no click and drag. There's only sort of, like, click, and then it puts it on your cursor, and then you move it around, and sometimes selectivity can be a little bit sticky. They've also got things subdivided into, like, all these menus over here that you kind of have to scroll in between in order to get after stuff. I would prefer it all be in, like, one big space, but I get with the screen economy why that's not a thing, I guess. But another thing is you can have multiple sets of gears. So, like, over here I have a slingshot and some bullets, and I have a weapon. It says that I re-keybound this. There was a key that it was bound to, but it didn't work. I re-keybound it to a new key. It still doesn't work, so actively hot-swapping weapons inside of combat requires me to open this menu, then click this button, which is kind of like the only place that I've seen it really work at. And that's a functionality that definitely needs to be fixed up. So taking a look over here, let's see what Ida has to say. Hello again. I'm monitoring your vitals remotely and keeping an eye on you. If I detect changes, you'll be the first to know. Thank you, doctor. You wanted to see me? She attempts to hide back her excitement on your arrival, but her poker face isn't as strong as she might think. She leads you back to the clinic to continue the conversation. Thank you for coming so quickly. We've discovered something that may be useful, and that is... She pauses for a moment to collect her thoughts before continuing. First, Camp Huygen was organized and funded with the exclusive purpose of mining, but did you know the mine here is currently locked down? Yeah, I picked that up from conversations with others in the camp. Did any of them tell you why the mines are closed? No, what's going on? It's a delicate matter, but I'm going to explain. The mining operations began. Everything was smooth. Within days, however, Isco and I were treating spontaneous skin lesions, miners falling violently ill. They couldn't continue work. We initially believed all of this to be caused by poor ventilation, but the operation never recovered, even after making adjustments. Even our replacement workers got sick, and I wasn't able to cure them. 
Don't blame yourself, Ida. We were honestly stumbling in the dark, and HQ pushed too hard for the work to keep going. I know, but I should have found a solution sooner. As of right now, all mining has stopped indefinitely, and HQ has all but abandoned Camp Huygen as a lost cause, which is why we're in dire straits. Isco and I have been determined to solve this medical conundrum ever since. I had hoped your memories would shed some light on it, but your amnesia has presented a problem. We instead went back to the previous owner of your Omniscope, that's the cyber eyes that they equipped on me, or at least as many of the parts inside that we swapped out to make yours usable. He was a patient who succumbed to the illness from the mines. At the very least, we hoped that the nanobot AI would give us insight. Nanobots... If I, remember correct, if I remember correctly, I received a nanobot shot before I came here. Yep, everybody gets that shot. Microscopic robots work together in clusters within a loose AI mesh to help regulate the body and immunize against harmful environments until atmospheric terraforming is complete. With so many unpredictable elements to our journey to Titan, the nanobots are mandatory for anybody coming here. However... The previous owner of your Omniscope possessed still active nanobots in his system that were somehow altered by the sickness down in the mine. These altered nanobots, we call them the virus, seem to break down normal nanobots, destroying and sometimes even absorbing them in the process. And those nanobots were transferred to you during your Omniscope procedure. Don't worry, we ran tests since you left the clinic and you're fine, which brings us to why I asked you to come back. No one else coming out of the mine contracted anything like this. So far, it looks like it spreads by direct contact, so the previous owner must have found something other than ore in the mine and brought it back with him. Your nanobots are resistant to the virus, and now I can share the news. There's the possibility that you're the only person on Titan that can go down into the mine. Are you serious? We ran several labs on your DNA and the nanobots when you were here last. The results show that your nanobots and your cryopod use divergent technology unlike anybody else's here on Titan. And so far, your nanobots have retained their integrity after a constant attack from the invading nanobots of the previous owner. That means you should be able to update your nanobots to make you almost completely immune to the harmful effects the mines will throw at you. You feel overwhelmed and you already feel like an outsider, but now you're difficult. They're different on a biological level. This is a lot. What are you asking of me? Your nanobots are giving you an edge nobody else has. We're all scavenging single shallow caves and collecting crumbs, but it'll soon be depleted at the rate that we're going. We need the resources in the mine, and by we, I mean all of us, including you. Without support from HQ or going into the mine, we don't survive. Period. The mine has abundant resources that you could use to help us hold on with the connection until HQ can be reestablished. We go into the mine. You go into the mines for all of our sake. Are you entrusting this mission to a stranger? You don't even know who I am. Isco has already attempted to alter our nanobots, but every test scenario ends in cell destruction. There just isn't anybody else, unfortunately. It's gotta be you. Ida and Isco remain silent. You contemplate what they've said. Why did you wake up in the camp and at this particular time of need? Is this fate? So since there's no choice, I'll accept. Just tell me what to do next. Excellent. System shows that the nanobots are partially functional at the moment. We need to force... Full resynchronization, which will bring them back up to 100% and keep you alive. Resistance is futile at this point, you nod. Good, follow me. There's a capsule at the back of the clinic and you enter and begin the process. Time passes and blinking lights and electrical zaps eventually become irritating. The machine continues to run. Isco, is everything synced? This has got to work. We can't directly interface with the nanobots, but I've gradually introduced virus samples and the nanobots fought off even the highest loads. I think they're calibrated. Good news is rare around here. Drinks on me if this works. Ida opens the capsule and helps you out. Everything is done. Your nanobots are ready for the mine. Oh, we've got a new meter. Nanobots activated. Gauge display activated. Nanobot perk activated. You feel any different? It feels weird. Nanobots are usually unnoticeable, but I can feel them moving through my body right now. It's going to take some getting used to, but at least I see a new display on the scope. Must mean it worked as planned. Well, I'd love to keep you for a few more hours to document this medical phenomenon, it's important for you to report to the mine ASAP. What you find inside will be the key to saving us. We've done all that we can. Go find Tau at the mines. Uh-oh. Is this like for a greater good moment? I have nano recovery and a new belt slot, I guess. Let's go talk to Tal. Here's Tal. And you are? Uh, Addison Thorpe. Dr. Shahani just pulled me out of hibernation, so I'm still not used to being frozen. After she locked the clinic doors and fixated on you, we haven't seen her in a while. I'm Overseer Mogorosi, and this is my mine. Seems quite quiet for a mine. I'd expect machinery and noise. 
Yeah, we had to close the mine ever since the workers got sick. Real talk with you, it's an excuse to not work. Bunch of lazy bastards. Mining Titan ain't no different than Earth and Mars, and they're costing me credits every day they aren't working. The mine made them sick? Do I look like a doctor? The doctors don't even know what's happening. One worker coughs and all the others pretend their throat hurts too. Now I recycle people's crap for credits. We'll be back to business soon enough though. Uh, Ida said to come meet up with you. You'll address me as Overseer Mogorosi, thank you. The doctor should have told you that. She did say you've got something special about you, but you don't look that tough to me, but nothing to lose. So into the mine you go, kid. If you somehow manage to surprise me, we can hammer out a deal. Might sound strange, but it turns out I'm made for this. I'll be heading there now. Hold up. You can only descend with proper equipment. Even if I'm in the clear, if you fail, it's in my best interest that you don't. Take. You can't take my piece of the pie that doesn't exist, yeah. The mine ain't empty. Critters down there have lived longer than us, so there's going to be a fight to mine the good stuff. Besides that, we can't predict the mine's stability. Gotta protect them rocks from falling on you, too. Good thinking, Mogorosi. What do I need? Exactly the gear we don't have. Judith has been hanging on to some equipment to run tests and make improvements. Go get it. I don't like waiting. All right. I also told him to craft me up some stuff, too, on the in-between. All right. So the goodies that I've crafted up... We've got ourselves some combat armor over here, which will be nice to have. They gave me some gloves and a helmet, and it looks like they gave me some mining shoes as well, so I'll throw that all on. I'm definitely looking better equipped, but here's the uh, piece de resistance. We've got ourselves a, a scrap rifle, finally. So I've actually got, like, a gun that I can play around with. So let's throw that in right there. I've got some stacks of bullets ready to go, so we'll go ahead and hammer those out as well. It looks like we can actually research this stuff right here, too. Let's go back into the research menu so far. Her little blueprints have been great for me. They're a little bit expensive, but, man, the stuff that keeps coming out of it is the good stuff. I'm going to have to focus on scavenging while I'm down in here, too, because I don't have enough goodies to get this done. Let's go talk to Mogorosi and see what he's got going on. Mogorosi, where'd he go? Oh, he's down here. All right. The characters in this game have a day and night cycle and they wander around on you. So Mogorosi took us to the mine and was like, let's go get it, and this monster just crawled out of the mine shaft. Lovely. What's that? Whatever it is, it's not good. Sebel pulls a lever to close the elevator doors, but the monster's too quick and fully emerges. What's the plan, boss? Hold it off. We gotta make sure it doesn't get to the camp. Did that guy just run away and leave us here? Bro, Mogorosi. He splits and heads to the mine entrance, leaving you and the rest behind and locks the door behind him. Wonderful. Seriously? Lock the door? You are right. That guy doesn't care about people. I was hoping he proved me wrong one day. Too bad. We're conversating a lot for giant flesh monster being in front of us. Everything is chaos. Your veins are ice cold. Something tells you this isn't your first time facing something like this. Get behind me. I'll make sure we get out of here. Um, booby trap? Do I gotta reload? How do I reload? There it is. All right, I'm reloaded. I'm gonna shoot this guy since they both got melee. It doesn't seem like they're doing that much damage though. Oh my God, it chucked that guy across the arena. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Just keep firing, bro, just keep firing. Weapon jammed? How do I fix that? I don't know how to fix that. How do I unjam it? Uh, step over to there. Yeah, he tried to do the big action grab on me. All right, let's swap weapons over the pipe. Step out of that. There we go. I do like that the combats get a little bit more sophisticated. I have a robo drone around here. Where's my robo drone at? There you go, robo drone. Help me out. I'm pretty sure it's just a robot with a knife on its head, but other than that, I don't really know. Oh, they got back up. They're alive. He killed my robot. That was my little robo buddy. I guess he bought me a couple turns. Thanks, Wolf. I don't trust strangers, but you're my new best friend. Yeah, thank you. Is everybody okay? Nobody got exposed, right? They check you and Alexi for wounds and herself, especially anywhere the creature might have touched bare skin. I don't know about you, but I've never seen one that big before. Me either. Let's get out of here. Tao has some explaining to do.
I know you could do it. You protected the mine and the campus safe. Great job. Alexi stomps toward Tao and punches him with his entire body, but Tao's only slightly moved by the punch, proving how physically tough he is. Tao smirks at him. Feel big now? What was that shit, Tao? Were you okay with us dying? We work with you every day. How could you do that to us? You two aren't here by accident. I know you could handle yourself if something happened. You're alive, too, so I don't see the problem. Good job. You lived. Bullshit, Tao. That's Overseer Magora. No, Overseer nothing no more. You're just plain Tao. No respect for you since once you've done for us. It, was, it wasn't for the wolf we'd all be dead. That thing could have broken through the mine entrance and killed everybody in the camp. Look, we're all proving our worth. Now's the time to start getting the camp back in shape. And when we're back on Earth and I'm promoted at Tech, I'll make sure we're all taken care of. Sable pulls Alexi away from the confrontation. Alexi isn't satisfied with Tao's offer, but he crosses his arms and holds his tongue. Let's not let Alexi's outburst sour our victory. Don't worry, we're going to make things fair, and I doubt there's too many creatures of that size in the mine anyways. To be careful, though, I'm going to call for the camp assembly to discuss the new danger and let everybody know the miners are apparently pulling guard duty, too. Our value is obvious. They'll have no choice but to acknowledge we need compensation. So consider this part of the deal. Come to the assembly at the pub so that we can explain what happened here and we'll all get paid. I mean, I thought we were going to go down into the mine. And you two. The repairs here seem workable. Get to work. After the assembly, Addison's going to need it to get the place running. Forget you, Tal. Yeah, yeah. Get back to work. Watch out for the bear trap that I left in the middle of the floor. I'm just saying, there's a bear trap right there. He didn't step on my bear trap, but... You shake your head in disbelief at Tao's spin on what just happened, and then you started thinking, what the hell are you going to say at the assembly? So after a lot of dialogue, a big chunk of dialogue, they unanimously voted, because I'm the only person immune to the virus, to give me complete control of the camp. And now, we have the camp control menu over here, where I can maintain different facilities, and I can power up different things, and get it all set up. Let's go down to basement one. It's not powered. There we go. Is it powered now? Yay, it's powered now! Going on adventures in a dungeon! Alright, so they've said that there's an underground facility down here that I need to get access to. So if I unload that and I reload it, does it clear the jam? Sometimes things are not very well explained here. There we go. Oh, I could put this in a quick slot too, can I? All right, well, we've got our gun. Let's click our flashlight on here. My flashlight doesn't have a whole lot left to it, but this place is looking pretty rough. Let's dungeon crawl for a minute and see if we can find anything good down here. That door opens. I hear something in here, but it doesn't look like I've got a way around over there. Got some shelving. All right, I'll grab some of those goodies so that I can salvage them off when I get back to camp. They gave me 2,000 bucks, too, which is a decent amount of money. Hopefully we don't end up point blank with anybody. Alright, bunch of junk right there. Everything in this game has value and is worth something. So make sure you're picking things. There's a zombie. The zombie's not dead. I shot it a lot, and it's still not dead. Swap weapons. Beat him to death with a pipe. Don't run, zombie. Don't run. I got you. Oh, I like that death animation, though. That looked pretty good. What is that? A yellow nano stone. It can be altered to create survival modules. You pick up a shiny stone left in the viscera of the monster's body. Crystals and monsters. Maybe Ida and Judah can make sense out of this. Yeah, maybe. So we got another side quest right there, and I'm guessing people just email me when they need me to do things down in the dungeon. I'm always accessible via email, you know? Got some lockers over here. That one's lootable. What you got in here? Some leftover clothes. I'm all out of fabric for crafting more armor, and since everything in this game has durability, and crafting seems to be a huge focus in this title, just like scavenging what you can to get out of situations, I don't really want to leave anything behind. And since we have free access to the mine, and we can sort of, like, come and go as we please, I'm okay with taking a little bit of a side trip to find the things that I need. Let's cut back on down here to the bottom left and see what that's got for us. Okay, a few more salvageables. Something right there. Popov's ID tag. 
Popov's ID tag. What does that do for me? Uh, it looks like it's a usable item. It said I could register it, so I guess there's probably going to be like a Jinjo-style collection quest where I've got to find the dog tags of everybody that died down here. And when I get to certain thresholds, they're going to unlock new pieces of equipment or like things that I can utilize. All right. Mm, we got a Zombo over there. I'll probably just fight him with the pipe. He's already so close that, like, why not? I think we got him. I think we're good. What did he drop? A black nano stone. So we're getting different colored stones now. All right. If you want to heal in this game, uh, you can use a med kit. Med kits will heal you over the next couple turns. I have so many of them that I'm not against using them right now. They kind of, like, heap you with consumables at the beginning of the game. So it's not really that big of a deal. I do want all those cans and everything. Ooh, med crate. What you got for me? We got bandages, so it's good for getting rid of your injury gauge. This game does have, like, wounds like broken legs, broken arms, stuff like that. You need to use splints Tarkov style in order to fix it. Or I guess, honestly, what this game kind of reminds me of is a very narrative-focused quasi-morph. I don't know if you guys have played Quasimorph, but Quasimorph is one of the upcoming games that I have the highest amount of faith in to be like an absolute banger. It kind of reminds me of that in the respect that it's got very good pixel art. It's got kind of like these injury systems and things that are in play. Uh, we are low on oxygen right now, which kind of sucks, and our canister is getting a little bit lower. So I may actually just have to go up to the surface before too long just to refill my oxygen canister. But we did get some stuff down here. Does this door open? I don't honestly know how to get down into there, unfortunately. Requires the following key card for the power array. Okay, oh, there's a medical crate up there that I missed too. Gotcha. Do I have a meter on screen that tells me how much is left in my oxygen tank? Because that feels like a really pertinent piece of information that, like, I should be aware of. After wandering around, I think it's a good idea for us to go back up and resupply real fast. My oxygen's getting really low, and without a flashlight, this is really dangerous. Because I can't establish line of sight to actually shoot at things, because they're just, you know, in the dark. And so since my flashlight went out... Ooh, I missed a med crate. Grab that over there. Got, like, a serve kit or something go back up to the ground level let me do some basic crafting and like maintenance real quick and then we'll head back down in so as it turns out the nano stones that we got off those zombies down there it's the crystallized nanites that are inside everybody's system and they're now using them to research upgrades for my character because we can use those to augment the nanites inside my system in order to get stronger so that's good stuff. I've had a load of random messages coming on in too, so I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of quests around. But along with all of those goodies, we also got a new batch of equipment uh, from the researches that we did. So we've got combat boots over here. We'll throw those in there. We've got ourselves a battered helmet. Throw that in there too because I'd like to not die. The things down there hit really hard, and they're super scary and unpleasant. We'll throw those on right there. We've got more accuracy, more armor. Looks good. And we've got nanocellulose. All right. I'm going to keep everybody on their research game real fast, too. Because, like, it's not like we don't have the money right now. So we might as well keep researching all the random stuff that we've got down here. The last thing I needed to make was a lamp, though. We've also got ourselves a new sledgehammer over here, which does way more damage, almost double the damage of what we previously had. So I'm feeling a lot more equipped to go down into the mines now. And look at that. Let there be light. I even brought an extra one with me just in case I end up needing it. Let's continue our journey down in here and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. Because there's still clearly rooms that I haven't been to yet. There's a zombie over there, but I don't think he can get to me. I don't think he's actually immediately a concern. We can't access from down there, so let's go back around this left way because I think there was a couple doors over here that we hadn't taken a look at. But now that I'm into the core gameplay loop of the title, I'm I'm digging it. I think there's a lot of like quality of life they could throw on in here. Like in the crafting menu, you never quite know how many crafts you have left. Like how many objects do I have left? You know what I mean? 
Oh, uh, dude, I missed all my shots. Ripper Roonies. Well, I hit that one, though. Enjoy that straight to the face. Another zombie bites the dust right there. I really wish this button worked right here for active hot swapping of equipment. That would make life intensely easier. All right, he's in base contact again. It's okay, new armor's holding up. Our, I mean, I'm taking a little bit of a scuffing. There we go. We'll drop him right there, too. Did they drop anything on the ground? Not really. I'm going to need a med kit, too. Can I hotkey a med kit? Yeah, quick slot that thing up. We're going to end up needing them anyways. 47 critical hit right there. Dude, these mutants are nasty. They're little toughies. It's a bummer that it doesn't swap in another med kit right there when you run out of med kit, too. So mostly what I'm seeing here is a little bit of menu gore and some missing quality of life. That's my observations. The game is also intensely wordy. I can't express that to you enough. There's going to be a lot of talking, and there's going to be a lot of dialogue. Uh, we got rid of the bleed right there that we had on us, which is good. I will probably eat a health bar and probably, like, drink a water real fast just to keep those meters ticking on downwards. But if you're looking for a game that has pretty cool pixel art, I haven't really had any bugs so far while playing through the game. Everything has worked perfectly fine. I think it's just the fiddly-diddly menus that require a lot of opening and closing, some hotkeys not working, stuff like that that all needs to be seen into and fixed up. But if they get that all banged out, this seems like a pretty cool version of like a sci-fi stone shard where instead of taking mercenary jobs in a medieval world, you are now going down into a mine over and over and over again to different floors to clean them out, to bring back technology, to build up the surface camp and then establish a core gameplay loop of getting new items so that you can make it further and further and further. Go ahead and heal me up real quick. Those are my observations after about two hours of playing the game now. After edits, this video will probably be shorter than that, but I've been playing for about an hour here on camera. I dig it. I want to play more. I, I like what they've got going on. I haven't seen any time limit problems or anything that have come up yet. I just saw a lot of people talking on the forums about time limit issues or whatever. And so, like, I haven't run into that yet, but maybe it's there. What am I feeling? A dark energy is coursing through your veins, which glow green under your skin. It hurts, but only to a small degree. Incoming communication. I've been remotely monitoring your vitals, and they went through the roof. What happened down there? Got hit by a monster. It feels like my body's attacking itself. I thought you said the nanobots resisted that. They keep the environmental nanobots from affecting you, but breakthrough nano infection through direct contact with mutant creatures is possible. Even with no nano infection levels, you're still in danger. They're programmed to self-replicate and will overwhelm your body if we don't take care of it. What can we do? Isco and I are working on it. Come back to camp ASAP and we'll address it. All right, I'm on my way now. I'm in a little bit of a situation right now, though. I just, I gotta kill a zombie real fast and then I'll be with you shortly. We've got a key card to the power relay. So that's to that door that we couldn't get through previously. This is subterrain too. I'm digging it. I like what they've got going on here. I'm kind of digging like the preparation that goes into each run. Like you've got to kind of get a couple lamps. You got to get like, you know, a couple of this, a couple of that that you put inside of your inventory to make sure you're all right before you head on in. Like it's not a game that you can just wander into with zero preparation. Like you've got to have your extra oxygen canisters. You got to have your extra goodies. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Crafting can take a little while, but I'm guessing you're supposed to be doing it as you're crawling on through. I would recommend they add the ability uh, to queue up crafts of similar objects so that you can, like, research beetle skins, like, five times in a row if you want to. Uh, but other than that, I want to investigate more. I can see myself playing this pretty aggressively in my free time. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping on in, and that's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.